welcome to second session of the VTU e section program in our uh, last session we discussed about uh, introduction of uh, green chemistry then major pollutants and their impact on human health and environment then very important that uh, 12 principles of green chemistry the next one so what are the various green chemical approaches so the first that microwave synthesis we observed microwave irradiated radiation in most of the bakeries for heating the food items like samosa veg verb and egg verbs. So this microwave synthesis is the major breakthrough in the synthetic organic chemistry where the conventional heating is inefficient and time consuming. Microwave synthesis is the new lead which is being used as a source of uh, heating in the organic synthetic reaction or organic synthesis reactions. What happens in the traditional method of heating? Chemical synthesis is done by conductive heating. By using an external source, here heat is passed through the substance, uh, substances by passing through the wall of the vessel. And what happens uh, here, the heating of the reaction vessel is more compared to the substances. While in microwave synthesis, the heating of the reactant molecule present in the reaction mixture, as this process does not depend on thermal conductivity of the vessel, the microwave heating will result in instantaneous localized strong heating effect of the reaction mixture and as a result the rate or velocity of a reaction increases because as we know as a rate set increase in temperature increases the rate or velocity of a chemical reaction so what is the principle behind this microwave synthesis heating the reactant molecules our materials with microwaves affect the superheating at ambient pressure which result into the possibility of the reaction which is not possible under conventional conditions. So how this uh, microwave radiation is originated? A microwave oven is used to generate the microwave radiation. And that can be inducing the moment of the molecule. So what happens when a substance is irradiated with microwave radiation? So there occurs an interaction between the magnetic field of the microwave radiation and the my magnetic field of the molecules. And this interaction produces a strong heating effect. This causes internal homogeneous heating effect which results into the strong interaction of the molecules and makes the reaction to occur which is not possible under conventional condition. And this method is also used to increase the rate or velocity of a reaction. In case of microwave radiation, the frequency of the radiation used is approximately 2450 MHz and this frequency is mostly absorbed by water or other substance with high dielectric constant. It is also possible 
to carry the reaction that is microwave radiation irradiated microwave irradiated synthesis either in presence of a solvent or in absence of a solvent. If the reaction is supposed to carry in presence of a solvent, the selection of the solvent is very important. The solvent should have dipole moment and it should have a boiling point at least 20 to 30 degrees Celsius more than the reaction temperature. I want to give some examples related to microwave irradiated synthesis. The first one, oxidation of the toluene. Oxidation of toluene in presence of an oxidizing agent like uh, alkaline potassium permanganate, it gives a benzoic acid. The conventional method or traditional method for this synthesis requires nearly about 10 to 12 hours. Whereas in microwave irradiated synthesis, it requires just 5 minutes. Within 5 minutes, we are getting this product. So second example, I want to quote the saphonification reaction. Saphonification of methyl benzoate in presence of sodium hydroxide under microwave irradiation, it gives 84% yield of benzoic acid. This reaction is completed in 2.5 minutes. I want to give another example, the esterification reaction. We know what is esterification. Whenever carboxylic acid allowed to react with alcohol in presence of a concentrated H2SO4, it forms an ester. This reaction is called esterification reaction. A mixture of carboxylic acid, here I have taken benzoic acid, when treated with alcohol that is n-propanol, this is the n-propanol. If this reaction is carried in microwave oven just for 6 minutes in presence of catalytical amount, catalytical amount of sulfuric acid, it gives corresponding ester that is propyl benzoic. Just observe this reaction requires just 6 minutes to complete. I would like to go for another concept that is biocatalyst or biocatalysis. All of you know catalyst is a substance which influences the rate or velocity of a reaction without undergoing any chemical change. However, it may undergone some physical changes. Catalyst enhance the reaction by carrying the reaction in alternate path of lower activation energy. So, I want to give, if you consider this is the reaction progress. So, this is the So, this is the activation energy in presence of a catalyst. This is the activation energy in presence of a catalyst. This is a energy, this is a reaction progress, reaction progress. So, this is the activation energy in presence of a catalyst. Whereas this is the activation energy in absence of a catalyst. So catalyst carries the reaction in alternate path. So this carries the reaction in shortest way in absence of a catalyst whereas in presence of a catalyst. So thereby it increases the rate or velocity of a reaction. Catalyst does not initiate the reaction. It only influences the rate or velocity of a 
reaction. So here I would like to discuss uh, something about this uh, biocatalyst. What are the biocatalyst? So what happens most of the bulk chemicals what we are using at present are manufactured from petroleum based hydrocarbons from petroleum based resources and these method invariably involved with the discharge of pollutants and harmful byproducts. Now microbial production is considered as a suitable alternative to this process. Advances in microbial genetics and understanding of metabolic pathway have led to the development of bacterial constructs with synthetic capacities or capabilities for converting sugar and some cheap raw material into industrially important compounds and pharmaceutical related compounds. So here enzymes are known as a biocatalyst, considered as a biocatalyst. So these are the protein molecules that act as a biological catalyst and these alter the rate of a biochemical reaction without undergoing any permanent change in themselves and these have a high degree of specificity besides high efficiency on the rate of a reaction. In the nature, enzyme helps in millions of chemical reaction to occur at extraordinary speeds and under moderate conditions. In absence of enzymes, most of the chemical reaction that maintain the living organism would occur only under drastic conditions that is at high temperature of the order of 100 degrees Celsius or above which may kill the fragile cell. At normal body temperature these reactions would often proceed at extremely slow rate. For example, if you consider the dissociation of carbonic acid to form carbon dioxide and water. It occurs in lungs, proceeds at the rate of 10 raised to 7 moles per dm cube per second at room temperature. On the other hand, in the cells, enzymes that is carbonic anhydrase accelerate the reaction by more than a million times. And the earliest biocatalytical conversion known to the mankind is the manufacture of ethyl alcohol from molasses. We know molasses is the mother liquor left out after crystallizing the sugar from sugar cane juice. It's a dark colored syrupy liquid. And to the molasses, it is first diluted and then yeast is added, then ammonium salts are added which act as a food for the yeast. And what happens, yeast contains two enzymes, one is called invertase another one is called gymage. So invertase converts the sucrose into glucose and fructose and the gymase converts this glucose into ethanol. And here this reaction we may consider it as the first conversion that is biochemical conversion known to the mankind. The enzymatic oxidation have been very well known since from many years. The conversion of ethanol to acetic acid 
in presence of bacterium acidity is a known as a quick vinegar process is also an best example for a biochemical reaction. So, what are the merits of these biochemical reaction compared to other catalytical reaction? The first one, so these biochemical reactions are very fast. The conversions are stereospecific. The biocatalytical conversion generally involves one step. Most of the reaction performed in aqueous medium at ambient temperature and pressure. Protection and deprotection of functional group is not required for biochemical reaction. And one best example for the biochemical or biocatalytic reaction in our daily life is the conversion of milk into curd. The next one, phase transfer catalyst. So, what do you mean by the term phase? Phase is nothing but physically distinct, mechanically separable part of a heterogeneous system. Phase transfer catalyst. I want to give one example. If you consider the reaction between C2H5Br, ethyl bromine with KOH, just to look at this reaction. So, this is organic, this is inorganic compound soluble in aqueous phase. If you consider this reaction, ethyl bromine is soluble in organic phase that is ether, whereas KOH, an inorganic compound soluble in aqueous phase. When these two are allowed to react, the reaction will not happen or happens very slowly because this is insoluble in aqueous medium, whereas this is insoluble in organic phase. But how these two reacts? So, these two reacts in presence of a phase transfer catalyst. So, phase transfer catalyst, in short, we call PTC, is that which allows the exchange of the chemical reaction between the two non miscible heterogeneous systems. It helps the solubility of one into the another solubility of this into here or here to here. PTC itself has both functional sites to get solubilized in both the systems and allow transferring substances from one system to another. It is usually the quaternary ammonium salts or posponium compounds or crown ether. So, that PTC is usually used in heterogeneous reaction system where it facilitates the migration of the reactant from one phase to another phase. The reactant with ionic nature are soluble in aqueous system but insoluble in organic medium. So, to make the reaction to happen, the PTC is used, which acts like a detergent to solubilize the salt into the desired organic medium. Since it accelerates the reaction, decreases the reaction time, needs less solvents, obtain higher yield. Therefore, it is regarded as the good agent for the green chemistry, which allows the reaction to occur in water medium. And the use of the solvent 
is drastically or dramatically or say decreased. Example for the phase transfer catalyst or phase transfer catalysis. I just consider this uh, example C8H11Br that is a 1 bromo octane when it is allowed to react with sodium cyanide in presence of uh, aqueous medium. So what happens? This reaction will not happen so because this is uh, soluble in organic phase, insoluble in aqueous phase, whereas this is soluble in aqueous phase and uh, insoluble in organic phase. But by the use of phase transfer catalyst, a small quantity of PTC, a rapid reaction occurs between these two to give the product that is non-initrile. So another example for phase transfer catalysis is the reaction between carboxylic acid chloride with aqueous solution of sodium cyanide or sodium. This is uh, sodium cyanide. It should be sodium cyanide in presence of a PTC, it gives corresponding benzoyl cyanide. So this reaction occurs in presence of phase transfer catalyst. What are the advantages of phase transfer catalyst in industry? So it eliminates the use of organic solvent. It eliminates the dangerous, inconvenient and quite expensive reactants like sodium hydride, sodium hydrogen, etc. Third, high reactivity and selectivity of the active species. high yield and purity of the products, simplicity of the procedure, low investment cost, low energy of consumption and minimization of industrial waste. So all these are the merits of phase transfer catalysis. And the fourth green chemistry approach is solvent free reaction. In other words, you can call it solvent less reaction or solid phase reaction. What happens? Environmental concern in synthetic chemistry have led to a reconsideration of reaction methodologies. This has resulted in investigation into atom economy, the use of supercritical carbon dioxide method, ionic liquids and other procedures to reduce the disposal problems associated with most of the chemical reactions. One obvious route to reduce the waste generation of chemicals from reagent is to carrying the reactions in absence of solving. Therefore, the design of green process with no use of hazardous and expensive solvents. Example, solvent-free reactions has gained a special attention from synthetic organic chemist. 
As a result, many reactions are newly found to proceed cleanly and efficiently in solid state or under solvent free reaction condition. So what is solid state reaction or what is solventless reaction? A dry media reaction or a solid state reaction or a solventless reaction is a chemical reaction which is carried in absence of a solvent. It has certain uh, merits. What are the merits of solvent free reaction or advantages of solvent free reactions? The first one economics or uh, cost of the production. The cost of the production becomes very less because it saves the money on solving. If the reaction is carried out in absence of the solvent, the cost of the solvent gets subtracted. Cost of the production becomes less. Second one, not required to remove the solvent after completion of the reaction, that is purification of the product is not required. At the end of the reaction, it is not required to remove the solvent. Third, reaction rate is very high due to more availability of reactants. As the concentration of the reactant increases, a rate or velocity of a reaction increases. And also, as the reaction is carried in only one phase, that is also accelerate the rate or velocity of a chemical reaction. Next, it is an environmental friendly because solvent is not required. So, therefore, during the preparation or during the synthesis, solvent will not be liberated into the environment. More efficient with more selectivity compared to other reactions carried in presence of a solvent. Reactions are very simple to handle, reduces the pollution comparatively. Solid state reaction follows the fifth principle of the green chemistry. The fifth principle of the green chemistry states to avoid the use of sol so toxic solvents during the chemical synthesis. So, this solid state synthesis, it follows the fifth principle of the green chemistry. I would like to quote few examples for this uh, solid state synthesis or solventless uh, reaction. The first one, Pleasant rearrangement. If allyl phenyl ether is heated, it gives ortho allyl phenol, and this reaction is carried in absence of the solvent, or it is carried in presence of a solid state. I mean, this is an example for solventless reaction. So, another one, the Grignard reaction. The reaction of benzophenone. Benzophenone, if it is treated with powdered form of Grignard reagent, it gives excess quantity of or more quantity of reduced product of ketone rather than adduct. Instead of this, adduct this will be more. That is. Uh, say what you call reduced product of the ketone will be more. This is an also example for a solvent less reaction. Then the way most important part of this green chemistry that is the synthesis of 
some typical organic compounds by conventional and green root that is old method or traditional method and green method or green root synthesis. So for our top uh, syllabus we have two examples one is a uh, adipic acid another one is a uh, para acetamol. So I would like to say how adipic acid is uh, synthesized by a conventional method and also by green root method. So in conventional method or in conventional synthesis, so benzene, we have taken benzene, we know benzene is a carcinogenic compound, it causes cancer. Benzene upon hydrogenation in presence of a nickel alumina catalyst at about 370 to 800 psi pressure, it forms cyclohexane hydrogenation in form cyclohexane. Oxidation of the cyclohexane in presence of copper compound at 120 to 140 PSI pressure, it forms cyclohexanone and cyclohexanol. It's a ketonic compound, cyclohexanone and cyclo hexanol and when the cyclohexanone and cyclohexanol product is uh, treated with in presence of a uh, concentrated HNO3 vanadium compound using catalyst it forms adipic acid. This is the structure of adipic acid. Or you can call this like COOH. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, benzene when treated with Nickel plus Al2O3 at 370 to 800 PSI pressure, it forms cyclohexane. Cyclohexane upon oxidation in presence of copper compound, it forms cyclohexanone and cyclohexanol, which further reacted in presence of a compound uh, like uh, ammonium vanadate as a catalyst using say, concentrated HNO3, it forms adipic acid. This is the old method or traditional method for the synthesis of adipic acid. So, what happens? What are the demerits of this conventional route? Or drawbacks of this uh, conventional method? It has some demerits, it has some drawbacks. The first one, the feedstock that is the reactant used in this conventional method is a benzene. We know benzene is a fossil fuel, I mean non-renewable source of energy and also carcinogenic, it is uh, responsible for the cancer. Second one, the isolation of the product that adipic acid formed at the end requires separation steps. It requires separation steps. Third one, the atom economy for this process is low. As we know, atom economy represents how much reactants are converted into a useful product or how much reactants are ends up into a useful product. So, the atom economy for this synthetic process is very low. Next, it generates environmentally unfriendly materials like nitrous oxides, oxides of the nitrogen in large amount and these emission contribute to global warming and ozone depletion. 
the organic solvents which are also used are harmful to the environment and difficult to dispose. So all these are the demerits or drawbacks of this conventional method for the synthesis of adipic acid. So therefore in order to overcome these demerits or these drawbacks the same adipic acid is synthesized from another feedstock that is called greener pathway or greener route for the synthesis of adipic acid which is absolutely safe. By making use of D-glucose, we can call this as a D-glucose. By making use of this D-glucose, we can prepare the adipic acid. So, if you observe the reaction, D-glucose, when treated with or in presence of E. coli, Escherichia coli, it forms three dehydroxychemate and this 3-dehydroxychemate further in presence of a same E. coli form cis-cis-muconic acid and this cis-cis-muconic acid upon hydrogenation in presence of a catalyst like platinum it forms adipic acid. If you observe this reaction, what are the merits of these green synthesis? What are the advantages of these green synthesis? The first one, the feedstock user for this reaction that is glucose is uh, easily available, safe and renewable. Second, this reaction eliminates several reaction steps and separation steps. Third, this method has high atom economy. Atom economy of this synthesis is very high. Conversion of the reactant into product is very high. Means cost of production becomes less. The reaction is very simple with less byproducts. Mild reaction conditions, I mean low temperature and pressures are required for these reactions. Ozone depleting gases and greenhouse gases will not be generated during this process. As we observe, the traditional method for the synthesis of a Adipic acid will liberate oxides of the nitrogen and these oxides of the nitrogen are having some adverse effect. They cause us some adverse effect to the human health as well as on the environment. But here in this uh, green root synthesis, we have so many merits. It has high atom economy. It occurs at low temperature and pressure. Ozone depleting gases and greenhouse gases will not be liberated during this synthetic process. Therefore, it is better to prepare adipic acid by this technique rather than a conventional route. Conventional route make use of a carcinogenic feedstock that is benzene and benzene is also a fossil fuel that is a, a depleting non-renewable source of energy. 
And what are the uses of adipic acid? Where you are using this adipic acid? The adipic acid is used in the preparation of uh, nylon 66, a very important, industrially important compound, nylon 66. To manufacture the plasticizers and lubricant compounds or components. Food grade adipic acid is used as a gelling aid, acidulant and buffering essence. So these are the some merits, I mean some uses of adipic acid. So I would like to go for another important compound. We are very familiar with that is synthesis of paracetamol. How this paracetamol is prepared by green root as well as by conventional root. We know this paracetamol is also called by another name acetaminophen is a medication used for the treatment of pain and fever. It is a mild analgesic compound. It is typically used for the mild to moderate pain relief and often sold in combination with other medication. Paracetamol is also used for several pain such as cancer pain and pain after surgery in combination with opioid pain medications, it is typically used either by mouth or rectally, but is also available in injection into the vein. Effects will last between 2 to 4 hours. It is classified as a mild analgesic. It is one of the world health organizations list of essential medicines. And how this paracetamol is uh, manufactured by conventional route as well as by a green route, I would like to discuss. The conventional route for the synthesis of paracetamol. Taking starting compound that is paranitrophenol, this is the paranitrophenol. A reduction of this paranitrophenol in presence of a reducing agent like tin in HCl, it gives Paraaminophenol, we know reduction of nitro compound gives amines. Paraaminophenol. Paraaminophenol, when treated with acetic anhydride in presence of uh, 3 to 4 drops of sulfuric acid, it gives a paraacetamol. I repeat once again, reduction of paranitrophenol, it gives paraaminophenol. Paraaminophenol, when treated with acetic anhydride, in presence of concentrated H2SO4, say about 3 to 4 drops of concentrated H2SO4, it gives paraacetamol. So, what are this? Uh, <coughs> Demerits of this process, drawbacks of this process. It has certain drawbacks or it has certain demerits. The first one, this conventional route produces a huge quantity of industrial waste compounds. It generates huge amount of waste. As it generates huge amount of waste, its atom economy is very low. It involved many reagents during the synthesis. And next one, in order to 
acylate the amines it is necessary first to neutralize the amines hydrochloride so all these are the demerits are the drawbacks for the synthesis of paracetamol to overcome these demerits or to overcome these drawbacks the same paracetamol is synthesized by another feedstock i would like to discuss the green root synthesis of paracetamol in my next session thank you